someone unpack my suitcase? Uh, yes, I should have told you they do that here. The maids will report back to Mum, by the way, so I hope that you didn't pack anything scandalous. Just my old boxes. Oh, no, they're used to that, don't worry. Duncan will be thrilled. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I hope you don't mind. I had them hang up an old school dinner jacket. We, uh, we dressed for dinner here, so I didn't want you to be caught short. Dressed for dinner? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like black tie. Could have brought one. Oh, no, don't be silly. I mean, I have a spare. It'd be a waste. Do you have cufflinks, though? No. That's all right, we'll get it sorted. I'll, uh, I'll get you some. And that is a clip from Saltburn. I'm delighted to say I've been joined by its writer, producer and director, Emerald Fennell. Hello, Emerald. How are you? Hello, Simon. I'm very well, thank you. Very nice to see you. Last time we spoke, you were in an attic somewhere with Kerry Mulligan. Yes, I do. I, I think, sadly, we weren't sharing an attic. I think we were in our own respective COVID attics. Yeah. Yes. So it's very nice to be able to do this in person. But obviously, you can't, you've got to do it without actors. Mm. Is, that, is that problematic to... You know, you've worked for so long on this film and it's just you talking about it. You know, the thing is, is I really support the strike and I'm really proud of them. And I think it will mean we can all make films going forward for the next few decades. So I sort of, you know, I'm sad for them that they can't talk up their own incredible work, but I'm but I'm also very supportive, so, yeah. So um, what is Saltburn? That's the ob Come on, that's the obvious question to No, start with. I know, sorry, that wasn't, I wasn't kind of, I was saying, you know. It's the title of the film, it so. It is the, it's the title of the film so, that I made. Explain the title. So explain the title, thank you. Uh, so, Saltburn is a house. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it is? It's very difficult for me to describe this film. I actually think that as the person who made it, I'm the least well-equipped to describe pithily <laughs> what this film is, because Saltburn is a, let's say, what I'm practised saying, Saltburn is an erotic thriller and a dark comedy about class and desire in England. Right. OK, so that's, okay, so, so that's the general canvas. Yes. Dark and twisted. Mm. Would that be fair? I think so, yeah. I think it would be fair. Would it be, I feel as though I need to tell you, is it, I feel really bad... I kind of hated everybody. Did you? Yes, but in a good way. Yeah. I felt as though this is what you were telling me to do. I think, well, look, it just depends on how you... This is a positive comment. Oh, thank you. Don't we all hate ourselves? You know, are, are we good people? I like to do, when, when I've been showing this film, whenever we have these kinds of conversations afterwards, I sort of like to say, like, hands up, who's a good person? That's a very good... And I do think... I do think the thing that I find interesting in any story, in any drama, is the tension between who we think we are, whether it's Elspeth who thinks she's an extremely good person, or Felix, or any of them. The tension between the delusion and the reality, that's kind of what drama is, isn't it? And so I don't hate any of them, of course, because they're me, all of them, up to a point. They're kind of coming from me somewhere. So I have to be sympathetic towards them. But I also don't, I don't think it's interesting to kind of make any moral judgments on anyone because I think people are, that people at their most interesting are kind of really mm. sticky and dire and lovable. So uh, we start in Oxford and then we move to, to, uh, to Saltburn. Is, mm. And is it a kind of a version of your Oxford? It's sort of a version of my Oxford. I mean, I think the thing for me is that because it's a sort of gothic movie in that sort of British Gothic tradition of like the go-between and Brideshead, it had to be, it had to have that kind of framing narrative, which was something happened one summer that like destroyed the protagonist's life. And so 15 years ago did feel like a great kind of starting point. And I like the specifics. I like, you know, getting into Nuts magazine and the terrible haircuts and the world's worst tattoos. And I think not only is it nice to be specific when you're talking about these very timeless worlds, but it's also very humanising. If you're talking about kind of very beautiful aristocratic people, there's really something lovely about bad fake tan or, yeah, live strong bracelet. But it could be 100 years ago or it could be now. I mean, essentially your story. Yeah. Because as soon as you go into a stately home, we feel as though we're in the 19th century, don't oh, we? Oh, and the rules never change. And and partly the reason it is set in a stately home rather than, you know, I don't know, sort of the Kardashians compound mm. or kind of like the Hamptons is that 
Britain has been so effectively exported to the country house as a genre. It's a fetish, really. Oh, it's a total fetish. And me and Linus, the amazing cinematographer, spent a lot of our time, you know, shooting the house as a fetish object, you know, sliding up the stairs and kind of, mm. you know, making sure that it was it was shot like a kind of beautiful actor because that's part of it. We're all, we are all of us engaged in this kind of sadomasochistic love affair with things that will never love us back, things that don't even see us. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.